Hello friends, and so we finally meet in our second episode of our Soviet jewelry video series. My name is Dmitry Tamoykin, the founder of the entire project, just in case you forgot, because it has been so long. And I would like to start first by saying why I haven't made any videos. And that is because of our tremendous success that we have experienced as an organization. I was featured on Russian TV channel Mir in a show called Made in the USSR where two episodes were de dedicated specifically to Soviet jewelry and I was happy to say that I was one of the lead experts there. We actually have them posted on our website so you can go take a look. Even if you don't understand Russian at least you can see me there or you can see our books there in the second episode. So that was a substantial break through for our Soviet jewelry project that we are moving internationally. Which, speaking about our project, which has been widely covered now in many news uh, outlets, especially on the web, we have been published in Russia, we have been published in Israel, we have been published in the United Kingdom, in North America, and basically, internationally, we have been substantially covered by the news. We also have gotten into uh, major Russian newspapers. All this means is major breakthroughs for our project. And we, I simply, we simply have been all uh, very busy. No time for a video. And yet, I, I wasn't even, even planning to make this video. Let's sidebar a little bit. And the video that I was planning for our second episode has nothing to do with what I am about to convey to you now. So, this video, what is it about? If those of you who follow the international news, the Russian news, those of you who do that, are aware of this major economic crisis that has hit hitting all Eastern Europe, primarily Russia, Ukraine, and many other former Soviet Union countries from the Soviet Union, and that is the devaluation of their currency. Now, this is not a political video, so I'm not going to get into the reasons why this is happening. To us, in fact, that is not as important as that it is happening. And I was thinking about making it video, but what really pushed me over the edge was today's news report, which happened on Russian Channel 1. This is the primary uh, news channel for the Russian-speaking um, audience, I would say, in Eastern Europe in general. And the very first episode of those, the uh, very first news episode on that channel today which I watched about an hour ago, uh, a little bit more, was dedicated to this economic currency crisis. But more specifically, the time of that episode mostly was dedicated to what Russians were doing in light of all of this devaluation of Russia's national currency called the ruble. So what are they doing? Number one thing that Russians are doing right now is buying cars. Second, they're buying home appliances. And third, much to my, not even, I wouldn't say even amazement, but much to my surprise that it was given so much attention, rightfully so of course, is that Russians are buying jewelry. Now this was an I told you so moment because this is on the primary news channel in Russia. One of the top things they list that what Russians are buying in crisis in face of devaluating currency is jewelry. The I told you so moment is because almost just a little bit over a year ago when Russia and United States went at it in Syria for the first time we were heavily writing about this very subject. And we were specifically telling people that in a time of crisis, invest your currency that 
might be susceptible to devaluation into hard assets such as gold and silver and of course we were recommending to invest it in gold and silver with a little bit of history behind it. Of course Soviet jewelry has tremendous history behind it and is one of the best investments that I recommend for Russians, for Ukrainians, for Belarusians and for all people living on the former Soviet Union territory. Of course, the same advice I can recommend to Canadians and Americans, and Canadians especially, because our currency is also shaking and devaluating substantially against the dollar and euro. Soviet jewelry is a great investment for anybody out there. And that is why I made a point to make this video. To outline again, and so you hear it from me, from our organization, in a video format, that every time there is a financial crisis in any country, from Russia to United States and everywhere in between, or any other corner of the globe, gold and silver collectibles are an excellent and a fantastic way to preserve your capital, to preserve your hard-earned money. They not only protect you against devaluation, they usually grow in such times of crisis. We have published extensively on this. Go through our timeline on our website of all the news reports that we did, and we've been covering it for a while. Even back, going back as far as 2007, 2008, 2011, global financial crisis. We've written, I've written back then, that Soviet gold and silver jewelry were a fantastic investment that grew in value substantial. That jewelry in general, that precious metals, precious metals in general, were lifesavers for populations that were hit with unexpected bills, increased credit rates, and many other unfortunate uh, things that followed. This is right now once again happening in Russia. Ruble has devalued about three times against the US dollar and against its previous positions. Exactly the same thing is happening to Ukraine, Grivna, Belarus, many other post-Soviet or ex-Soviet neighbors are experiencing similar trends. And of course, this is very concerning and Again, I told you so. What is the population doing? The local population is instinctively running and investing their hard-earned money that is quickly becoming worthless into hard assets, such as gold jewelry. In light of this, an excellent and a well-respected financial advisor named Jim Rickards, who I believe worked for the CIA, who written a book called Currency Wars, and this is no way an advertisement to him, because I haven't read that book. He said, top four things you want to invest in. Land, one. Roughly 25%, of course. Hard cash, you always want to keep hard cash. You don't want to liquidate all your hard cash. This is not what I'm recommending here. Then he said, precious metals. And then art. If you split each into 25%, we are suggesting in the form of collectible gold antiques. And of course, as the leader of the Soviet jewelry project, I'm saying specifically Soviet gold and silver jewelry, is to combine the two last suggestions of Jim Records and invest in precious metals and art simultaneously. And that is Soviet gold and silver jewelry and many other very interesting gold antiques. If you follow this advice, you will be you will be feeling very secure in any economic situation. So if you live in Russia and you understand English, follow this advice. Buy your local Soviet gold and silver jewelry that is available to you. If you live in Ukraine you can do exactly the same. If you live in Lithuania, Poland, Latvia if you live in Kazakhstan, in fact, if you live anywhere, you should still buy Soviet gold and silver jewelry. It will only get 
more expensive. And we clearly are seeing this trend on which people are picking up instinctively, but a lot have been listening and reading our reports, listening to my uh, videos about this very specific subject of investing your money into hard assets. It is a win-win situation where you don't take everything, but a good portion of that money, you invest in those hard assets, and they will protect you in hard economic uh, situations when or should your country encounter them. We saw that again in 2008-2011 in the United States. We're seeing this right now in Russia. So two opposing countries, two substantially different economic models, different mindsets of people to a certain extent, although I think Russians and Americans are very much alike, but two, of course, reasonable, um, reasonable understanding. These are two different uh, nations and people. And look how they're reacting. People are always in these situations react very similarly. They're, when their country encounters a financial crisis, what do they do? They invest in hard assets. And mind you, Soviet gold and silver are becoming very liquid assets now. In fact, if you look at our recent uh, sales reports that just came out, what you will see is record-breaking amounts of Soviet gold and silver jewelry sold and bought, record-breaking prices that were achieved. We saw a lot of high-end, medium and low-end items uh, from the Soviet period made of gold and silver that were sold on eBay alone. This is happening worldwide. So take our advice, take my advice, and learn more about these unique collectibles. I, of course, highly recommend Soviet gold and silver jewelry, but gold and silver and his investment in general, and gold and silver collectibles. Learn about it, think about investing it, and take action and actually invest. Thank you very much, and I will see you in our next series. Take care.